Welcome back guys to another video on deadlock. In previous lecture, we already completed deadlock prevention technique. In this lecture, today we are going to learn about deadlock avoidance technique. Now, to understand the basic difference between deadlock avoidance and deadlock prevention technique, let's first of all revise the basic funda of deadlock prevention technique. So the basic funda of deadlock prevention technique is that it will simply put a restriction on the way the process will request for the resource. It means based on that uh, funda, suppose process P2 wants to access resource R2, then it cannot send this request because sending this request will lead our system to the deadlock. So deadlock prevention technique will never allow process P2 to even send a request. Now, the basic funda of deadlock avoidance technique is that it doesn't put any restriction on the way the process will request for the resource. It means here no need of any background calculation. Without any background calculation, simply send a request. Now, whether to grant this request or not, that will be done based on the background calculation. Granting this request will lead our system to the deadlock, then we never grant this request. Otherwise, we grant the request and allocate that resource to particular process. Based on this example, granting this request will lead our system to the deadlock, right? So, we never allocate resource R2 to process P2. So, this is the basic funda of deadlock avoidance technique. Now, for that background calculation, we have a banker's algorithm. So, let's see how this banker's algorithm works. Hello friends, this is me, Vishal, working in this bank. This bank having total 1 crore rupees to provide a loan to their customers and my job is to provide a loan to my customers. You need to help me to provide a loan to grant a permission of loan or not. You need to help me. Okay, so let's start. Here is our first customer. His name is Smith. Smith wants to buy this brand new house and the cost of the house is 30 lakh rupees. Now, he also wants to buy this car and for that he need one more 10 lakh rupees. Now the problem is he doesn't have enough money. So, he come up with the idea of taking a home loan of 40 lakh rupees. He visit our bank and asking me for providing a home loan of 40 lakh rupees. Tell me what I need to do. I doesn't provide him a loan because he need total 30 lakh rupees to buy his house and he is requesting me for 40 lakh rupees. So I come up with the idea of not providing him a loan because he is lying. Now meet our new customer. His name is John. John wants to start his new business and for that he need total 2 crore rupees. He is investing his 80 lakh rupees so he need 1 crore at 20 lakh rupees to start his business. For that he also come up with the idea of taking a business loan. He also visit our bank and asking me for providing me a loan, a business loan. I found that he need total 2 crore rupees to start his business and he is requesting for 1 crore and 20 lakh rupees. So he is not lying like a smith. So now I need to check that whether that money is available or not. But he is requesting for 1 crore at 20 lakh rupees and we have only available 1 crore rupees. So we cannot provide him a business loan. 
meet our new customer superman superman likes this girl and he wants to marry with this girl for marriage he need total 20 lakh rupees and superman available of 50 lakh rupees with him so he need 5 lakh rupees to marry with this beautiful girl now he also visit our bank and asking me for providing a marriage loan i investigate and i found that he need total 20 lakh rupees and he is requesting me for 5 lakh rupees so he is not lying now i need to check that whether that money is available with us or not and i found that money he is requesting is only 5 lakh rupees and we have available 1 crore rupees so yes superman we can provide you a marriage loan so here we are basically following the three different steps in first step we are checking that whether a person is lying or not by checking that whatever the money he is requesting is must be less than the money he actually need total money he needs if he is not lying then we check that whether the money is available with us or not if that money is available with us then we will provide him a loan otherwise we doesn't provide a loan to our customers so these same steps are followed in bankers algorithm just the difference is here we are providing a loan we are granting a permission of providing a loan and here in banker's algorithm we are granting the permission of accessing a resource by particular process here is the banker's algorithm here we are following the same step in first step we are checking that whatever the resources which are requested is must be less than the maximum number of uh, resources it requires if this condition is true then we will go to the step 2 and check that whether that requested resources are available with us or not if it is available then we will go to the step 3 and allocate that resource to particular process otherwise we will return false in both the cases in any of the cases the condition is false so one more thing you need to remember is that here we are using this banker's algorithm only for background calculation so here step 3 is not the actual allocation we are not actually allocating that process here this is only for background calculation so in background we are checking that if we allocate this resource to that process then is it leads to the deadlock or not so this is only for background calculation this is not the actual allocation now what we are doing in step 3 let's see available minus equals to re uh, request it means here we are updating some arrays of uh, given data that uh, here we are assuming that we allocated the requested resource so we need to change the available so available resources minus equals to request so these are allo allocated so we again need to change the allocated resources so allocated plus equals to request and in last step we remove them from the need because now it is already allocated so its need is now minus equals to the request let's understand this uh, from the example so you can easily understand so here uh, some data is given some array is given some value is given here and the given data says that we have eight resources are available with us now let's see in process p1 maximum requirement is five and from that two is already allocated so now how much he need he need more three resource to complete this task and he is requesting for three more resources so in first step what we are doing we are checking that he is lying or not so here we are checking that whatever the requesting uh, resource 
is must be less than the maximum requirement. So yes, here the maximum requirement is 5 and he is requesting for 3 resources. So yes, it's so it's true. So we go to the step 2. Now in step 2, we check that the request, whatever the requesting resource, is it available with us or not? Yes, here the uh, resources are available because 8 resources are available from that 3 is requesting. So yes, we can provide this 3 resource. So we provide this resource to them and in step 3, we change the value of this variables. So let's change it. So uh, first of all, we change the available. So here available is 8 from that it is requesting for 3. So now we uh, provide these uh, 3 uh, variables. So 3 is given to process P1. So now we have only 5 are available. Now it is requesting for 0. Now it is requesting for 0 because all are given. So we are changing the requesting value now. Allocated are now 2 plus this 3. So the allocated are sorry 5. So allocated are 5 and now it doesn't need any resource. So its need is 0. So here what we are doing is we are following these three steps now check for p2 here p2 uh, maximum requirement is 3 and it is requesting for 4 resource so he is lying process p2 is lying so here this condition is false so it will simply return false from step 1 no need to follow this step 2 step 3 and step 4 now in p3 maximum requirement is 10 and it is requesting for 9 resource. So yes, it's true. 10 is maximum requirement from that it is requesting for 9 resource. So yes, it's true. So we go to the step 2. In step 2, we check that whether that 9 resources are available or not. But no, we have only 5 resources are available and it is requesting for 9 resource. So here it will simply return false from this step 2. No need to follow step 3. So, this is the uh, simple uh, funda or the simple banker's algorithm. We follow uh, safety algorithm. We will learn a safety algorithm in next lecture. So, here what we are doing is simply we are Right now, we are only allocating that resources to the particular process. We are not checking that is it leads to the deadlock or not. Here we are only allocating. Is it leads to the deadlock or not, that will be checked in safety algorithm. And that safety algorithm we will learn in next lecture. Till then, bye-bye, take care. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel.